Welcome to Strange and Scary Mysteries of the Month, where we dive into five creepy and strange stories that you may or may not have heard of from all around the world. Today, we're going to take a look at a Las Vegas woman who passed away on notice and the people that took advantage of that, the psychological, terrifying way that Japan deals with their own death row inmates, a serial killer from Dallas who targeted elderly women, a fugitive bank robber who lived his best life, as well as the cold case of a teenager nicknamed Horseshoe Harriet. But before we get started, I wanted to introduce you to a service that has seriously saved me so much time and annoyance that I love it. It's called NordPass, and they store every single one of your passwords safely and securely so you can log in on any site, app, email, or whatever with one single master password. Plus, they are the most secure way to store your passwords, which saves you from the possibility of any sort of cybercrime or identity theft, and you can stay logged in to up to six devices. Before NordPass, I used to have an entire Excel spreadsheet with hundreds of passwords that I encrypted myself in case anyone found the sheet. Every day, I used it to copy and paste to log on to everything, and it was a pain. Then I got NordPass, and it saved me so much time. So if you're doing something similar, then you need to take advantage of their 50% off offer. That's right. Get 50% off a two-year NordPass premium plan at nordpass.com slash scarymysteries, or use the code scarymysteries. Plus, you get a free additional month completely for free. The link's down in the description below. Now, on to the strange and scary mysteries of the month. For January 2022. Number 5. 82-year-old Las Vegas woman. Perhaps one of the most dreaded things that any of us would want to avoid is dying a lonely death. This means being alone at the final moments when we transition from life to death. In contrast, a good death, if there is one, means that you're surrounded by the people you love and are able to say your final goodbyes. This next story is both heartbreaking and gruesome, and you might think it can only happen in movies. One could say that Lucille Payne had made it in life. She owned a house located in the suburbs of Las Vegas, and her properties amounted in the millions. But despite these riches, the 82-year-old lived all by herself, and sadly, died by herself. In 2018, Payne reportedly died completely unnoticed. Not even her relatives knew of her passing. Her body, sitting on a chair, was left undisturbed for two years. Neighbors told police that they didn't suspect anything unusual was going on in the house, as they later noted that it appeared empty throughout those two years. Bills weren't a problem, as the woman had apparently set her payments up automatically and this prevented utility companies from noticing the red flags. And perhaps she would have continued going on unnoticed had it not been for some unpleasant circumstances. Reports said that in April of 2021, squatters broke into her residence and there discovered her remains. These trespassers, whose identities remain unknown, decided to cut up the old woman's body and then bury it in her own yard. With the place literally left open for pillaging, investigators said that the squatters went on to sell off all of her belongings, including her car, and kept the proceeds all to themselves. They also happened to get hold of her finances, draining her accounts for their own benefits. In November of the same year, local authorities received a tip about that break-in. Upon investigation, they found what was described as a very shallow grave in the backyard and buried within were the cut-up remains of the homeowner. Police were quick to suspect that Payne had been murdered. However, evidence later showed that she had actually been dead for several years before the burglary incident in April. Witnesses later reported hearing some activity in what they thought to be an abandoned house. No one knows exactly how they did it, but law enforcers were able to track down the culprits. 
and they were primarily charged for selling items that didn't belong to them. They then faced charges of an improper burial. Payne's estate is now selling what remains of the property. The ensuing reports somehow failed to mention if her family or any of her relatives came to sort out her passing. This meant that even after this harrowing incident, no one cared to give Lucille Payne a proper burial. Number four, death row inmates sue Japan. What if you lived your life in a way that the people with power over you could decide that it's time for you to go at any moment. And they wouldn't even need to tell you until just hours before you were scheduled to die. You may think that such dreadful situations could only happen in fiction, but of course, they do occur in reality and people are actually protesting against them. In November of 2021, two Japanese inmates on death row were suing their own government for 22 million yen, which is roughly 200,000 US dollars, over its rather morbid execution policy. Reports indicate that in Japan, they notify prisoners of their execution on the exact same day that it is carried out. Yutaka Ueda, the lawyer of the two convicted individuals, revealed that some inmates would get their short notice just a few hours before it was carried out. Ueda said that this practice is inhumane and unconstitutional. The counselor for the pair said, death row prisoners live in fear every morning that that day will be their last. It's extremely inhumane. In contrast, prisoners in other countries are given a schedule for their execution. This gives them enough time to contemplate the reality of their situation. Moreover, it provides them the chance to make mental preparations for their impending end. For Ueda, it appears like the Japanese government is trying hard to keep its inmates in the dark. To note, Japan's criminal code doesn't have a law mandating such torturous policy. However, their decision to uphold such practices was driven by their goal to keep prisoners from suffering before their execution. This has long been decried by several human rights campaigners, including Amnesty International, who considered same-day execution as purely cruel, inhumane, and degrading. In Japan, capital punishment is conducted by hanging. Currently, there are 112 people who are presently waiting for their time to go to the gallows. Not one of them knows when this will happen, and sure, they committed heinous deeds themselves, but regardless, one can only imagine the unbearable agony that they have to endure on a daily basis. Number three, Dallas serial killer. People go abroad in search for greener pastures. For Billy Chemermere, going to the United States from Kenya meant great opportunities to make a new living. However, greed and selfishness can often get the best of people, as was the case for Billy. Around the 1990s, the Kenyan and his family were able to establish several senior living homes in McKinney and Allen in Dallas, Texas. It wasn't entirely revealed in the reports if the man had been working for their facilities, but it's safe to assume that he knew the ropes of the business. However, he wasn't interested in using such skills and knowledge for good. Instead, his intention was to further his devious plans. In 2016, Billy was caught trespassing on the property of Edgemere, a high-end senior living complex in Dallas. When confronted, he faked his name as Benjamin Koitaba. He was consequently told to leave the property, and the Dallas police, meanwhile, instructed the Edgemere staff to notify them if he ever returned. In June of that same year, authorities then got a call from the establishment saying that the suspicious trespasser was back again. He got held, and this time the police asked for his identification. The IDs he showed revealed two names, Benjamin Koitaba and Billy Shamirmer. 
The man was later charged with criminal trespassing and was made to serve a short jail sentence. The arrest prompted Dallas police to look into the deaths of Edgemere, during which Billy was caught hanging around the vicinity. Two women, 91-year-old Phyllis Payne and 94-year-old Phoebe Perry, had died within that period and their deaths were ruled to be of natural causes. However, investigators now had the suspicion that the Kenyan National killed the two elderly women and stole their jewelry. A week after his release from jail, police reports indicated that the 48-year-old had gone to the tradition Prestonwood and far north Dallas and allegedly killed Joyce Abramowitz, who was 82 years old, before robbing the deceased of her possessions. Seven other deaths at the same senior living community were then reported, and the police had a strong reason to believe that Billy had something to do with these horrific occurrences. Over a period of two years, there were, in total, 18 older women who died of questionable reasons, and their deaths were attributed to him as well. His most recent arrest happened in March of 2018, when 91-year-old Mary Bartell survived an attack by a person who reportedly forced his way into her apartment at a senior living community in Plano. This perpetrator was said to have told her, don't fight me, as he smothered her face with a pillow. He then laughed with her jewelry, and police immediately had Billy as the primary suspect to this new murder attempt. They tracked him down at his apartment the next day, and he was found in possession of that jewelry as well as some cash. In 2021, the immigrant was made to face a capital murder trial for the death of an unnamed 81-year-old woman from Dallas, and the verdict of which is yet to be known. Senior citizens, as frail as they are, are meant to be assisted and taken care of. Unfortunately, there are some people, like our boy Billy, who see their condition as a reason to exploit them for their own gains. Number 2. 1969 Cleveland Bank Heist One of the greatest classic films to come out in 1968 was Steve McQueen's The Thomas Crown Affair. In the movie, the main character is a businessman who got so bored of his huge success that he decided to rob a bank, not for money, but just for the fun of it. One person of interest in this next story is by no means a bored billionaire. However, he did the same outrageous act featured in the movie and further proved to the world that sometimes one can get away with murder. On Friday, July 11, 1969, a man named Theodore Conrad went to work at the Society National Bank in Cleveland where he was a bank teller. He was just 20 years old at the time, and at the end of his shift that day, he left the building with a huge sum of $215,000, which would be approximately $1.6 million today. By Monday, everyone at the bank was shocked to find an empty vault and a missing coworker. When they reported the robbery, the young man, who was called Ted by his friends, already had a two-day head start. Conrad had pulled off one of, if not the biggest bank robbery in Cleveland's history. Investigators had chased numerous leads throughout the years that brought them across the country, from the East Coast to the West Coast, and even to the islands of Hawaii. But even then, they could never find Mr. Conrad. More than 50 years had passed since the heist, and the case still remains unsolved. The man had literally just disappeared from the face of the earth. However, through the incessant efforts of a new generation of investigators, Conrad was finally found, but not in the way that he was expected to be. In November of 2021, the office of the U.S. Marshals announced that they had already solved the case, and the key to their success was an obituary of a certain Thomas Randell. Randell, who passed away at the age of 73, apparently confessed to his family about a secret that even they couldn't believe. He told them that he was not the man whom they had always known him to be. 
The ensuing investigation revealed that after the theft, Conrad fled to Washington, D.C., then to Los Angeles before finally settling in Boston, Massachusetts in 1970. He had changed his name to Randell, and everything about him had changed as well, including his line of work and lifestyle. Conrad eventually went on and died of lung cancer. The lead investigator, who made a breakthrough in the case, said that the obituary presented some of the most glaring revelations. For instance, much of the information provided in the report somehow mirrored that of Conrad's genuine life. The birthdays were the same, and so were the parents' names. It also indicated the same birthplace, which is Denver, and college alma mater. With all these pieces of evidence, authorities flew to Linfield, Massachusetts to talk to Conrad or Randell's family. Despite them not disclosing the truth, the police will not be charging his family. However, since there is no statute of limitations on bank robbery, Conrad would have been arrested and indicted with the appropriate charges. We're often told of the rule that no crime or sin goes unpunished. However, Theodore Conrad's bank heist is but proof that sometimes there can be an exception to every rule. Number one, remains of slain teenager, Horseshoe Harriet identified. The National Crime Information Center has revealed that a person is more likely to be murdered in Alaska than in any other state. And if one happened to be a sex worker in Anchorage, Alaska between the years of 1971 and 83, the person was most likely to perish at the hands of the infamous Alaskan serial killer and rapist, Robert Hansen. Known to the media as the Butcher Baker, Hansen left a trail of dead bodies of vulnerable women or those who worked in the sex industry. For more than a decade, he abducted, raped, and murdered at least 17 women. His M.O. was unlike any other. He would kidnap his victims and then drive or fly them to remote wilderness locations where he would let them loose. Described by prosecutors as an evil genius, this psychotic killer would then make a sport out of these helpless women by hunting them down using his weapons of choice a Ruger Mini-14, and a knife. Like a true hunter, the Iowa native would afterwards bury his victims at a location marked with an X on his map. There was a handful of prey who managed to escape from Hansen's clutches. Some of them even talked to the police about their ordeal. However, because of the fact that they were individuals who were in that line of profession, police had the tendency to dismiss their reports. And so, the Butcher Baker's reign of terror continued. In April of 1984, an unidentified body was found abandoned next to Horseshoe Lake near Anchorage. Because of this, the woman was later nicknamed Horseshoe Harriet. It would take almost four decades before her true identity was determined. Thanks to genetic genealogy and the available DNA evidence, Authorities were finally able to confirm the victim as Robin Pelkey. The subsequent investigation indicated that the 19-year-old from Arkansas had spent her adolescence with her father and stepmother in Alaska. Had it not been for Hansen's death in 2014 and the prosecutor's decision to reopen the case, Horseshoe Harriet may have forever remained a Jane Doe. A husband a devout Christian, a family man and businessman, who would have thought that behind Hansen's mild-mannered demeanor lay a secret life so sinister, its terror reverberates even to this day. So that's it for today's Scary Mysteries of the Month. If you enjoyed these stories, then remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell. We do videos like this every single month, and on a weekly basis, check out our Twisted News segment where we cover even more crazy stories currently happening in our world. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you soon.